Can I call you Mimi? Of course you Because I know it's only people that you love. Well. They call you Mimi. You, you don't love we me. love each other? Of course. A new name and a new sound for Mariah back in 2005. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrity X with Dan Tony Potts. Four years after Mariah's disappointing soundtrack, the glitter, and subsequent breakdown, she rose out of the ashes and Mimi's emancipation turned into a reinvention. <laughs> Some may justify it as the revenge of Mariah. I wouldn't go that far, but it was definitely the emancipation of Mimi. This is about the real person inside here who is also an artist and happens to express myself through my work as a songwriter, a producer, and a singer. Call her the comeback kid. The emancipation of Mimi gave Mariah her biggest opening week ever, selling 400,000 copies. Being able to put out a record with a company um, behind me that isn't trying to put me somewhere I'm not musically has been an amazing thing. The rebirth of Mariah also gave her the biggest selling CD of 2005 with more than 5 million copies sold. Or we could see the year of Mimi if we like. As for Grammy consideration? When I got one I was like wow this is a really great moment you know this is, this is amazing to be here for that and then when they told me it was eight I was like are you serious? Eight, count them eight, Grammy nominations for Mariah and the emancipation of Mimi. She was visibly affected by the news. You seemed really emotional up there. You know what? It's been an emotional ride. And um, when I say that, I mean my life. After two lackluster albums, the Glitter soundtrack was sold just 116,000 copies in its first week. By the way, a good mark for most fans. And Charm Bracelet, which sold 241,000 copies in its first week, Mariah's reinvention was truly one for the ages. We all have to go through storms, and you know what? You feel a whole lot better at the end of it, but you go through it, and it's worth it. Mariah finished 2005 with a bang. Along with her top-selling album of the year, she also nabbed another number one single, her 17th. From the 17th number one, it was just last week, it was right when I was leaving for my Christmas vacation, and my friends threw me a sexy 17 party, and it was really fun. 2005 was certainly the year of Mariah. I truly believe for anybody out there, no matter what it is, if you have faith and you believe in something and you work really hard, you know, you can achieve it. It's been a blessed year. It really has. 11 albums, more than 150 million copies sold worldwide, and five Grammy Awards. Since the debut of Mariah's first album back in 1990, she has gone on to become a pop music legend who dominates the charts. And it all started when an 18-year-old Mariah passed along her demo tape to then Columbia Records head, Tommy Mottola. I went into this like just excited about making a record. I mean, I came from not having absolutely, having absolutely nothing. I mean, my mom did her best and we did whatever. I decided as a teenage girl to be like a, a vagrant running around with a demo tape that ate one bagel that we basically begged the guy from the deli to give us. 20 years after Mariah was just scraping by and trying desperately to get noticed, she had scored her 18th number one hit, Touch My Body, surpassing Elvis Presley with the second most chart-topping singles. She did it by never losing focus from her early days. When you set out to be an artist, you want to get it out to as many people as possible, and that's what it's representing, you know, it's a representation of. If they're feeling the song, they spend their hard-earned money, they, they call the radio stations, they request the song. I mean, that's very important to me, to, um, to feel that acceptance from the public. After breaking out in 1990 with her self-titled album she co-wrote, Mariah's now legendary song, Vision of Love, Someday, and I Don't Want to Cry, earned her two Grammys, Best New Artist and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. She became the best-selling female performer of the 1990s, having released seven multi-platinum studio albums. I've done, you know, albums quicker than most people do albums, and I think that's part of the reason. And my fans are really loyal and dedicated, and I owe everything to them. In 2001, Mariah signed an $80 million deal with Virgin, the biggest record contract ever at the time. This is about me being able to feel comfortable and confident as an artist and feel like, okay, now I can make my music and feel like I'm secure rather than like, I want to have all the money in the land. People are making a big deal about this money or this deal or whatever, but um, and it is a humongous big deal, but to me it's more about... I always felt like the rug could be pulled out from under me. For me, it's a continuous 
um, process. It's all fueling the whole energetic craze. It's a fun fest, but it's also like a little bit sick. <laughs> it's all pressure. But it's when the pressure cut up with Mariah that her music career took a turn amid her very public meltdown. After her rumored suicide attempt, Virgin parted ways with Mariah and abruptly ended her record $80 million deal. But it's Mariah who had the last word. It's great to have success, but I could retire tomorrow, right. and I've already achieved, you know, far more than my goals ever were. In two minutes, the Mariah Beginnings, how she overcame near poverty and her struggles growing up in a biracial family. Plus, we go back to the school where Mariah realized her dreams of becoming a star. Then, moments with Mariah, how this glamorous diva shows off her fun side and makes a dream come true for Nancy O'Dell. That's all coming up when Celebrity Expose returns. Celebrity Expose, fact check question. Despite a rumored feud, which fellow diva did Mariah team up with for a hit collaboration? Find out next.